I said, the motion, there is nothing absolute about the motion. There is nothing absolute about the motion. Motion is what an observer perceives. Different observers will make different reportings on the same motion. Right? Say for example, say there is a particle A hmm? whose coordinate which is in a state of one dimensional motion and that straight line could be referred to as the x axis. Who stops you from believing that? Right? That could be referred to as the x axis. Say its x coordinate x a is a function of time. x a varies with time. Will depend on time. Hmm? So obviously the velocity of the particle a as measured by a fixed origin o. If this is a fixed origin o as seen by a as seen by a fixed point o as seen by a fixed point o is rate of change of x a with time as seen by this fixed point o right that's the velocity of the particle as seen by this fixed point o sometimes loosely they call it the absolute velocity they call it the absolute velocity i'm averse to this terminology called absolute velocity but let me let me get a little frivolous and still call it the absolute velocity because uh, in literature they call it absolute velocity i don't like this term absolute at all in context of motion but nevertheless va as seen by a fixed point o which is a fixed observer o fixed point o is like my fixed observer right is rate of change of x with time which you can choose to call the absolute velocity hmm <coughs> so at a given instant of time t the particle a has a velocity v a which is rate of change of x with time instantaneous rate of change of the x coordinate of the particle with time hmm? then there is another particle b there is another particle b <coughs> and its position as seen by this fixed point o the origin is x b 0 is x b 0 and this x b is also a function of time this x b let's say is also a function of time and as seen by this fixed point o right and uh, this x b changes as far as this point is o, o is concerned so this point o will report a velocity on the particle so velocity on the particle say the absolute velocity of b loosely speaking once again the absolute velocity of b as seen by o is rate of change of x b with time instantaneous rate of change of x b with time which will give me the absolute velocity of b call it v b call it v b yes or no hmm? now that is all right but now let me change my observer the observer for these computations was a fixed observer for v a and v b these were observations made by a fixed observer oh these were observations made by a fixed observer Oh, right. But now I want to examine, investigate, investigate the motion of A as perceived by B. By B. That means as perceived by B. That means if B was looked upon as an observer, if B was looked upon as an observer, you know what I'm saying? When I say perceived by B or reported by B, all these terms indicate that B is my new observer. B is my new observer. These calculations were for the observer being O. But now I'm trying to take inputs from B. And I'm trying to ask B, hey, what is A doing? 
B is in a state of motion itself. B has its own absolute velocity, like A does. Right? And I want now to get some inputs from B about the motion of A. Right? Now, all inputs coming from B, all inputs coming from B, in as far as A is concerned, all inputs about the motion of A, all inputs about the motion of A coming from B would fall under the category of relative motion of A with respect to B. All motion of A as perceived by B will fall in the category of what's called relative motion of A with respect to B. With respect, whenever they say with respect to something, that means that something is my observer. If B was the observer, what about the motion of A? That falls within the jurisdiction of relative motion of A with respect to B. Relative motion of A with respect to B. Hmm? Now, so first of all, if you ask A, if you ask B, if you ask B about the position of A, then B will tell you that the position of A is this. Vectorially, B will tell you this is the position of A. Yes or no? A will tell you this is the position of A, but B will tell you this is the position of A. Yes or no? This is the position of A as seen by B. Am I right or not? This is the position of A as seen by B. Right? So, would you want to believe that this is XA minus XB? Right? Position of A as seen by B. By B. Which is relative position of B with respect to A. Which is relative position of B with respect to A. I am sorry, relative position of A with respect to B. Relative position of A with respect to B. Which I write as X of A with respect to B. It means the position of A with respect to B. Position of A as seen by B. This is my observer. This is the observed. A is the observed. B is the observer. This is X of A with respect to B. X of A with respect to B would be this length. Yes or no? Which would be X of A minus X of B. Yes or no? This is X of A. This is X of B. What is this? This is X of A minus X of B. So this is X of A minus X of B. Yes or no? This is X of A minus X of B. Position of A with respect to B. XA was what? XA was the position of A with respect to O. XB was what? Position of B with respect to O. And X of A with respect to B is position of A as reported by B, which is obviously this from B to A, which is XA minus XB, which is XA minus XB. Yes or no? Hmm? <coughs> now, so, position of A as reported by B, like I said, is position of A, absolute position of A, minus absolute position of B. Absolute position of A minus absolute position of B would be the position of A as seen by B. Hmm? Now, if B is asked, if B is asked what the velocity of A is, if B is asked what the velocity of A is, then the notion of B, the notion of B in as far as the velocity of A is concerned, the notion of B, the report of B related to the velocity of A 
will be not how fast x a changes with time will be how fast x a minus x b changes with time how fast x a minus x b changes with time will measure the velocity of a as seen by b because this is the position of a with respect to b this is the position of a with respect to b and how fast this changes will measure what will measure the velocity of a with respect to b this will measure the velocity of a with respect to b yes or no this will measure the velocity of a with respect to b right so what will measure the velocity of a with respect to b velocity of a with respect to b is measured by rate of change of rate of change of position of a with respect to b will be measured by rate of change of position of a with respect to b that will measure the velocity of a with respect to b or as seen by b right which is ddt of x of a with respect to b is x a minus x b x a minus x b yes or no right now which is ddt of x a minus ddt of x b ddt of x a minus ddt of x b right derivative of the difference is difference of the derivative properties of differentiation right now yes or no but what is ddt of x a absolute velocity of a what is ddt of x b absolute velocity of b yes or no so this is velocity of a minus velocity of b which is called the relative velocity v rel relative velocity of a with respect to b relative velocity of a with respect to b would be rate of change of relative position x a b is what relative position of a with respect to b this is position of a as seen by b is relative position of a with respect to b relative and rate of change of relative position will give me relative velocity this is relative velocity of a with respect to b how about it how about it right now hmm? that means <coughs> can i wipe this off so if a is moving to the right with a velocity of 50 meters per second when i say is moving to the right with a velocity of 50 meters per second that means we are talking of absolute velocity of a we are talking of absolute velocity of a this is the velocity reported by a fixed observer o this is the velocity reported by a fixed observer o right and there is a particle b there is a particle b hmm? this is velocity of a and this particle is b moving to is moving to the right with a velocity of say 10 meters per second 10 meters per second hmm? <coughs> it means the velocity of b as reported by o which is the absolute velocity of b is 10 meters per second this is what it means huh? now the moment i say the moment i say velocity of a with respect to b that means what is what is b thinking about the velocity of a it means what is b thinking what is b thinking about the velocity of a hmm? which like we just figured out is va minus vb which turns out to be 40 meters per second now if you were if you were b if you were b 
and you had a velocity of 10 meters per second to the right. If you were B and you had a velocity of 10 meters per second to the right, what do you think you will report about your own velocity? Zero. You will report on yourself zero velocity. You will report on yourself zero velocity. But you would report on A a velocity of 40 meters per second. So when I talk of an observer, when I talk of an observer, it's like that observer thinks that he has no motion. The observer will think that he has no motion. Yes or no? The observer thinks that he has no motion. That means this situation reduces to an equivalent situation. This situation reduces to an equivalent situation. Situation. in context of B, this reduces to an equivalent situation in context of B, where in context of B, now B is the master of the game, B is making all observations and all reports, right? So in that equivalent situation, it's as if B is at rest. It's as if B is at rest because B is reporting no velocity on itself. B is reporting no velocity on itself. B is my newly found observer is my is called my frame of reference. B is my new frame of reference. B is my new frame of reference, my new observer, right? Frame of reference is only an observer, right? B is my new frame of reference. And in this equivalent situation, B is at rest and A is moving to the right, not with a velocity 50 meters per second, but with a velocity VA plus negative of the velocity of B. That means, if you want to find the relative velocity of A with respect to B, this is the relative velocity of A with respect to B, essentially what have you done? To the absolute velocity of A, you have made an adjustment. What is that adjustment? The adjustment is negative of the velocity of B. B is my observer, right? Uh, to find relative velocity, of A with respect to B, make an adjustment to the velocity of A. This was the original velocity of A. What adjustment has been made to the velocity of A? You have added negative of the velocity of the observer. <coughs> to find relative velocity of A with respect to B, make an adjustment. Make an adjustment to the velocity of A. Add negative of the velocity of the observer. Observer B. Add negative of the velocity of the observer B, you will get the relative velocity of A. To the velocity of A, add negative of the velocity of the observer to get the relative velocity of A with respect to that observer. To get the relative velocity of a with respect to that observer B. This is the adjustment that you have made. In this situation, VA will no longer be VA. To VA, you make an adjustment which is negative of the velocity of B. Right? In the equivalent situation, to B, B, same adjustment is made in this equivalent. It had a velocity of B. This was my observer. To it, add minus VB. It becomes zero in the equivalent situation. To the velocity of B, add the same, make the same adjustment, which is minus VB, which will bring B to rest, which will bring B to rest and will look upon B as an observer, will look upon B as an observer. B will then say A is moving to the right with a velocity VA minus VB. In the equivalent situation, pin the observer, fix the observer, whoever that observer is, fix that observer and make an adjustment to the velocity of the observed.
how much of adjustment it will no longer be va the adjustment is minus vb to get the velocity of the observed to get the velocity of the observed yes or no that will right so now how does this equivalent situation help okay so in this equivalent situation as if b is at rest it's as if b is at rest and a is moving to the right with a velocity va minus vb which is 40 meters per second this is my equivalent situation this is my equivalent situation yes or no right now suppose the original separation between a and b this was at time t equal to 0 this was at time t equal to 0 suppose the separation between a and b was 80 meters suppose the separation between a and b was 80 meters <coughs> hmm. i now i now want to find the time taken i now want to find the time taken for the separation to become 120 meters i now want to find the time taken for the separation to become 120 meters now what does this 40 meters per second mean it means this is the rate at which the separation between a and b is increases increasing with time what does this mean it is the rate at which the separation between a and b is increasing with time now from 80 to 120 what is the increase in separation 40 meters and every second the separation increases at the rate of 40 meters per second every second the separation increases at the rate of 40 meters per second so for an increase of 40 meters per second you would require one second so from this state to this state it will take one second it will take one second yes or no hmm? so if this was t equal to 0 this would have been t equal to 1 this would have been t equal to 1 yes or no hmm? get the these simple elements right because they will get extended to generalize motion you know these very concepts you'll realize that we are repeating the same thing again and again but this these are the basic ideas the framework right can i wipe this off hmm? suppose i had a situation like this <coughs> say there was particle 1 moving to the right at the rate of 60 meters per second particle 1 moving to the right with a constant speed of 60 meters per second and there was a particle 2 moving to the right at a speed constant speed of say 30 meters per second all right and the separation between them was say 150 meters separation between them was 150 meters obviously you can see common sense if a is 1 is moving faster than 2 it will catch up with 2 it will catch up with 2 if 1 is moving faster than 2 1 will catch up with 2 1 would eventually meet 2 right what we do is we convert this into an equivalent situation convert into an equivalent situation convert this into an equivalent situation it's my choice who i want to make the observer let me make two as my observer let me make two as my observer whoever i make as my observer whoever i choose as my observer then it's as if i'm pinning that down i'm fixing that person i'm fixing that person right so this is made by observer this is my observer this is my observer too that means fixed as if fixed if this is my observer then look at one one in this equivalent situation the velocity of one would have to be modified the velocity of one would have to be modified it will no longer be v1 it will be v1 minus the velocity of the observer it will be v1 minus the velocity of the observer yes or no velocity of one with respect to two in this equivalent situation 
the velocity of one will not be v1 it will be velocity of one with respect to the observer in this equivalent situation right so in this equivalent situation in this equivalent situation it will no longer be v1 but it's going to be v1 minus v2 which is velocity of one as seen by two which is realistically relative velocity of 1 with respect to 2. Relative velocity of 1 with respect to 2, right? Which turns out to be how much? 60 minus 30, which is 30 meters per second in the equivalent situation. Now, what is the separation between 1 and 2? This is 150 meters. right so it's as if 2 is at rest and 1 is moving to the right not with a speed 60 meters per second but with a speed 30 meters per second and therefore it will bump into 2 after a while in this equivalent situation I can find the time it takes for 1 to bump into 2 I can find the time it takes for 1 to bump into 2 the time it takes for 1 to bump into 2 would be well as if this is at rest and the separation is 150 meters divided by 30 meters per second divided by 30 meters per second which makes it 5 seconds which makes it 5 seconds yes or no this is the time this is the time taken by 1 to bump into 2 yes or no now so by converting a situation into an equivalent situation where see th this is a an important observation by converting a given situation into an equivalent situation what is it that I mean by an equivalent situation where of the two particles one particle is pinned fixed that means that particle is chosen as my observer that's my choice I chose one of the particles as my observer when I choose one particle as the observer then the velocity of the other particle will have to be modified it will no longer be v1 it will be v1 plus negative of the velocity of the observer minus v2 which makes it 30 meters per second now this does give me the time it takes for a to 1 to bump into 2 but it does not tell me this equivalent situation does not tell me where exactly 1 would bump into 2 this does not tell me where exactly bump 1 would bump into 2 it only tells me the time it takes for 1 to bump into 2 so as long as all that we are interested to know is how long one would take to bump into two converting into an equivalent situation is fine but it does not explicitly tell me it does not explicitly tell me where exactly one would bump into two but it does not matter we can go back to the mother situation this was the mother situation and I know one second later uh, or five seconds later one is going to bump into two by converting into an equivalent situation I know the time it takes for one to bump into two not where one bumps into two but five seconds later where would one be one would have traveled 300 meters one would have traveled 300 meters from where it was one would have traveled 300 meters and in five seconds this guy would have traversed 150 meters in 5 seconds this guy would have traversed 150 meters yes or no so where they bump into each other is like 300 meters from where one originally was and 150 meters from where two originally was so I can convert into an equivalent situation and the find and find the time it takes for one particle to bump into another and then I can using that I can go back to the mother situation and in that time where one was and where two was can be obtained where one was and where two was can be obtained yes or no is the idea clear is there any confusion on that Tanya five seconds time they take see when I convert into an equivalent situation right in the equivalent situation it's as if the observer is fixed 
and the velocity of 1 is modified it's no longer v1 it's v1 minus v2 which makes it 30 meters per second right so when would bump when when would one bump into two in the equivalent situation when one in this equivalent situation traverses 150 meters at the rate of 30 meters per second it takes five seconds so one would bump into two in the equivalent situation in five seconds all right so now with this data five seconds i go back to this I go back to this. In 5 seconds I know this would have traversed 300 meters at the rate of 60 meters per second and this would have traversed 150 meters at the rate of 5 meters per second. So in 5 seconds that time whether computed from this or computed from this will not change. That time will remain the same. See you can see that suppose it takes t seconds in this forget the equivalent situation suppose it takes t seconds in this right then what's the distance covered by this v1 into t from this point what's the displacement of this in t seconds 30 into t v2 into t right so this one would be like a v1 into t this one would be like a v2 into t and the difference between v1 into t and v2 into t v1 into t in minus v2 into t should be 150 meters so the time whether you compute from here or you compute from here is still going to be 150 by v1 minus v2 it does not matter how you compute the time whether you use the equivalent situation to compute the time for uh, the two to bump into each other or you use the mother situation to compute the time for one to bump into each other. that's going to remain the same but the equivalent situation will readily give you the time for one to bump into the other one but it will not it will hide from you where they bump into each other but with this data with this data you go back to the mother situation and seek the positions of one and two where they bump into each other you seek the positions of one and two to get where they exactly bump into each other because now i know that they do take five seconds to meet in 5 seconds that would, uh, this would have traversed 300, 300 meters this would have traversed 150 meters yes or no hmm? yes yes relative separation will be governed by the equivalent situation okay let me do that I got your point. Can I wipe this off? He says take one as the observer. Not an issue. But get, get a feel for it. It's all right to play around with it. Can I wipe this off? And take one as the observer instead. Huh? <coughs> so my original situation was particle 1 this was what 60 meters per second right I'm trying not to change that data so that you understand 2 was 30 meters per second right and the separation was 150 meters right okay okay let me make one the observer and everything to the right positive everything to the left negative that's my convention say everything measured rightward positive everything measured leftward negative all right clear hmm? now our friend here says make one the observer make one the observer that means this is as if it is fixed as if fixed whoever i choose as my observer is pinned in position is fixed in position is fixed in position hmm? now two now in this equivalent situation two now in this equivalent situation two now in this equivalent situation will no longer have a velocity v2 the velocity of two will have to get adjusted to the velocity of 2 I will have to add negative of the velocity of the observer I would have to add negative of the velocity of the observer so this is like 30 minus 60 which is minus 30 meters per second that means if 1 is fixed the velocity of 2 is minus 30 meters per second 
which means what it means 30 mean negative means it's leftwards negative means it's leftwards because i've chosen rightward positive so leftward must be negative, negative. so this actually boils down to this being one and two being and this separation of course 150 meters hmm. two is moving instead minus 30 meters per second to the right means 30 meters per second to the left it's as if this is at rest in this equivalent situation and 2 is moving leftwards with a velocity of 30 meters per second and the separation is 150 meters now for 2 to bump into 1 the time taken would be 150 meters by 30 meters per second that makes it 5 seconds right so the time taken for 2 to bump into 1 would be 150 meters divided by 30 meters per second that makes it 5 seconds it does not matter therefore who you choose as the observer to find the time for the separation to be a certain amount or the separation to reduce to zero it's okay to convert it into an equivalent situation and make any one of the two the observer make any one of the two the observer as long as you are making suitable modifications in the velocity of the observed the velocity of the observed to be modified by an amount which is negative of the velocity of the observer the velocity the observer being fixed being pinned to position and the equivalent situation thus obtained yes or no I have a very clear idea again like I said this will not tell you where 2 is going to bump into 1 it might falsely falsely make you believe hey that 2 is bumping into 1 in this in this position no 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 in 5 seconds 1 would have moved somewhere 2 would have moved somewhere yes or no that will tell you that will tell you where exactly they meet this will not tell you where exactly they meet. This will tell you the time it takes for them to meet. Got me? Hmm? <coughs> so, if I had say, particle 1, moving to the right with a velocity of 30 meters per second particle 2 moving to the left with a velocity say this is moving to the right with a velocity of 30 meters per second this is moving to the left with a velocity of 50 meters per second and the separation between them is say 240 meters separation between them is say 240 meters and say I choose to call everything rightward positive and it's not like always you have to call rightward positive you can call rightward negative also and leftward positive that's all right there is no loss of generality in doing that say I call rightward positive and leftward negative hmm? <coughs> then between the two let me make one of them the observer let me make one of them the observer hmm. say <coughs> say I make two my observer it does not matter though right don't think that I'm in any manner trying to cheat you by making two the observer right so I'm fixing two I'm fixing two hmm. now the velocity of one will no longer be 30 meters per second to the right the velocity of one is going to be in this equivalent situ situation velocity of 1 minus velocity of 2 now what is velocity of 1 30 meters per second to the right minus what is velocity of 2 minus 50 meters per second because it's leftward so minus minus 50 meters per second that makes it 80 meters per second yes or no that means in this equivalent situation if 2 is made the observer a is then known to have a velocity of 80 meters per second to the right and the separation between them 240 meters will be covered in a time equal to 240 by 80 which makes it 3 seconds the equivalent situation does not tell me where 1 and 2 will meet it tells me the time it takes for them to meet right now I can go back to the mother situation I know that in 3 seconds they meet. In 3 seconds this would have traversed 90 meters to the right. 
in three seconds this would have covered 150 meters to the left together they would have covered 240 meters so I know three seconds later they meet here 90 meters from 1 and 150 meters from 2 is where they meet yes or no hmm? now right right precisely can I wipe this off ideas properly seeping into you right the simpler version of these ideas will will become sophisticated right and but remain as simple as this they will still remain simple can I wipe this off hmm? Sounds all right. Now, <coughs> if particle A has a velocity VA, if positive, say I have chosen everything rightward positive. So if VA is positive, A will be moving to the right. If VA is negative, A is moving to the B has a velocity VB. If VB is positive, B is moving to the right. If VB is negative, B is moving to the left. Like I said, if I choose to make A my observer, if I choose to make A my observer, then I will have to modify the velocity of Velocity of B will no longer be VB. It's going to be VB adjusted to the tune of minus VA. It will be VB adjusted to the tune of minus B, which is velocity of B as seen by A. Velocity of B as seen by A, which is the relative velocity of B with respect to a, which is the relative velocity of B with respect to A. VB minus VA, right? <coughs> so, A thinks that velocity of B with respect to A thinks that the velocity of A is not VA. Uh, A thinks that velocity of B is not VB but is VB minus VA. acceleration of B with respect to A. This is velocity of B with respect to A. Acceleration of B with respect to A. Acceleration of B with respect to A would be rate of change of velocity of B with respect to A. Acceleration of B with respect to A is rate of change of velocity of B with respect to A. Rate at which this velocity, this is the velocity that A thinks B has. This is the velocity that A thinks B has. The rate at which this changes, rate at which this changes will not give me the absolute acceleration of B, will give me the acceleration of B as seen by A. Will give me the acceleration of B as seen by A. Yes or no? So, rate at which this changes, will give me the relative acceleration of B with respect to A. Are you, are you there with me on this? Huh? Rate at which relative velocity changes will give me relative acceleration. This is velocity of B with respect to A. If you find the rate at which this velocity of B with respect to A changes, what will you get? This will give you the acceleration of B with respect to A. As reported by A, as observed by B, as seen by uh, A, as seen by A. Right? So this is uh, DDT of velocity of B with respect to A as you can see is VB minus VA.
yes or no which is ddt of vb minus ddt of va rudra minus ddt of va yes or no this is ddt of vb minus ddt of va but what's ddt of B, vb absolute acceleration of b what is ddt of va absolute acceleration of a so this gives me acceleration of b as seen by a is v a b ddt of v b minus ddt of v a which is acceleration of b minus acceleration of a yes or no hmm? which means <coughs> Can I wipe this off? Hmm? Which means suppose this is A, this is B. Hmm? A has a velocity say 75 meters per second to the right. And B has a velocity, say, 100 meters per second to the right. Hmm? B so and B has an acceleration, say, 10 meters per second squared to the right, and A has an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared to the right. I convert this into an equivalent situation convert this into an ES. ES means equivalent situation. Means one of them is made the observer. One of them is made the observer. So I, let me make A the observer. Let me make A the observer in the equivalent situation. And B is the observed. Now, Will the velocity of B be VB? No, it's going to be VB minus VA. So velocity of B will be VB minus VA. Will the acceleration of B be AB? It's going to be AB minus AA, which is 10 meters per second minus 5 meters per second squared that makes it 5 meters per second squared that makes it 5 meters per second squared yes or no so that's the equivalent situation so a thinks that b at this instant of time has a velocity of 25 meters per second has an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared obviously at an instant later b the velocity of b will change because it is accelerated yes or no is the idea clear? Hmm? So you understand this notion of motion, which essentially is relative motion only. All motion is relative motion. It could be relative to a fixed point or relative to a moving point. That's the only difference. But all motion is only relative motion. Because it's an observer that's reporting that motion. The observer could be fixed or the observer could be moving. In principle, there is no difference. That's the same ideology that percolates clear or not 